Over the years, Nigeria has experienced attacks from several angles. The formal head of crisis, which has filled the news bulletins in recent times, has existed since 1999, when Nigeria's fourth republic began. Boko Haram terrorists also began to terrorize the nation in 2009. And now, the space of attacks, kidnappings and assassinations have increased, even more in recent times. The attacks have left many destitute, poor and even lost. These people are usually called internally displaced persons. The ICRC, that is the International uh, Committee of the Red Cross, has taken it upon themselves to ensure humanitarian protection and assistance for these victims of war and violence. Well, joining me to discuss this is Ali Dawob. He is the spokesperson of the International Community of the Red Cross. Thank you very much, Mr. Dawob, for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Great. Good evening. Thank you. Um, the most um, disturbing of stories, of course, Nigeria's headlines are filled with very disturbing stories lately, but the most disturbing is that there are about 14 states that have been um, globally pinpointed as um, states that are unsafe in Nigeria. And of course, some, most of those states are in the north and some, some parts of the south, south and the southwest. But um, for someone who's worked in these troubled zones for a long time, paint us a picture of what's going on in, in the northern parts of the country. Um, thank you very much again uh, for inviting me into this program. Um, the northeast of Nigeria has been having these uh, issues of uh, conflict for more than a decade now. Um, a lot of people have been affected. Thousands of hundreds of people have been affected. Uh, they live in camps, actually, in very, very dilapidated conditions, very poor conditions. Um, they are in need of a lot of basic things uh, that has to do with, uh, like, water, food, shelter, medication, uh, just to, to, to keep their livelihood. They really need these basic things. Nobody talks about other things that are really not basic, but they, what they need presently is the basic things for their survival. Um, a lot of other uh, people are separated from their families. Uh, from our record, we have about 24,000 people uh, registered in our organization because some of the people know that we support in terms of um, reuniting families that have been separated. So people come to us and uh, now we have a figure of 24,000 people that have registered and are trying to, to, to get re reunited with their loved ones. Uh, either uh, parents or children or uh, husbands and wives. This, these are some of the people that are looking for. 60% of these people are actually uh, children uh, that, are, that are missing. So, like I said, this is like just a picture. Uh, the primary health center is no more working. Uh, secondary health center is equally uh, sometimes uh, because all the healthcare staff that have been there in these remote areas have deserted these areas. Mm. So the primary health centers are not actually working as they are supposed to be working. So these are some of the challenges uh, displaced people can face in the northeast of Nigeria and also in other parts of Nigeria where we are having conflicts and other situations that are related to violence uh, in the country. Um, I, I know we noticed that there have also been attacks on these people who work with NGOs, humanitarian agencies like yours, and um, this has also caused some some form of shortage of people to help um, these displaced persons. Um, recently, there was an attack on a UN hub somewhere uh, in, in the north again. And, and I remember the kidnappings of some um, aid workers. Um, how, how do you, I'm trying to put it the best way, how do you get the, the, the energy to get back to work when you hear the next day that your colleague has been kidnapped or someone was killed from your camp? Um, what's the driving force for people like you to continue to work in these places? Because it's, of course, the conditions are harsh and you do not know who's going to attack next. Uh, thank you very much for this, uh, for these comments that you have made. Reminded Humanitarian me. actors are actually very busy trying to support people that have been affected. It is very unfortunate that we have some of our staff uh, being affected during this uh, conflict that is going on. It's unacceptable to, to kidnap or abduct humanitarian actors 
in the course of their their duties this is unacceptable and this national humanitarian law says no to this and we call on all the actors to understand that humanitarian actors the international committee of the red cross specifically does not participate in the conflict that is going on what we do is mainly to try to see that we have supported people that are affected mm. people are affected are mostly civilians that are affected by the conflict yes of course we have these situations 2018 we had two of our staff that have been the hawan saifura we still have them in our minds we still remember them uh, very very unfortunate that they were abducted and finally they were killed this is something that we always try to call on actors Uh, to understand that humanitarian actors health workers are actually people that are out there to support the people that have been affected uh, denying them access to people that are affected is actually not uh, something uh, to do so we encourage people to allow access so that civilian populations that have been affected will have access to medication will have access to food will have access to shelter and also sanitation and so on and so forth so this is our appeal to all the people that are engaged in fighting all the armed groups that are fighting to be able to respect humanitarian actors and to be able to respect the international committee of the red cross uh, in nigeria and across uh, the globe let's talk about the issue of migration there's been a lot of and in fact there's been mass migration from nigeria and it didn't start today it started from when the issues of boko haram continued to um, hold sway Now we're seeing more and more people migrating away from these troubled zones either to places where they feel they can seek um you know refuge but do you see serious cases of migration are people really fleeing uh, especially the shores of Nigeria places that are bordered with other countries do you see a lot of them Yeah if you talk about migration you are talking about um the conflict in the north is generally is uh, like bordering four state, four countries Nigeria Niger uh, Chad and Cameroon of course uh, with the borders that are not very demarcated is easy for people to move across uh, Niger Republic uh, also easy for people to move across Chad or for people of Chad to also cross over to Nigeria Cameroon and the rest of them so we have seen this uh, people we have also traced Uh, people that are missing to other countries and we were able to reunite them of course people are are moving there are a lot of movement of civilian population uh, to areas that have uh, are experiencing conflict um some of them of course uh, naturally they will need to, to have uh, safety and security so they move to safer areas these safer areas this is where we try to also move and see how we can support them that's why we position on some of our offices in the very strategic locations our office in biu for example in the southern part of borno state is positioned specifically to support people that are moving down south from from uh, borno state down south to northern part of adamawa state we also like we have another office in mubi where this office is also very strategically located uh, uh, harboring people that are displaced and are moving down south to 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 Adamawa state and so on so positioning of this office is actually very strategic so that we would be able to have access to civilian populations of course as an organization we also have uh, situations where our safety is not guaranteed mm. so these areas we surely uh, would not like to send our staff to areas yeah. that uh, Le- are, are not very safe for them to be to not to not to, i mean to to be affected by one situation or the other so we try to avoid that of course the situation is changing it's always very dynamic uh, things that happened yesterday could not uh, we, we so we keep assessing and reassessing the situation mm. to try to see how we can adapt uh, mm-hmm. our activities to the people and how we can adopt some of the measures to do so that we will be able to keep uh, getting uh, support to the civilian populations across this region it's really That's- very very a uh, daunting task and we are trying our best to see that we are able to meet some of these uh, people that are in need. All right, finally, we hear that there are so many ungoverned areas, un- un- ungoverned zones and spots in in these places um where there's no security, no cover or presence of government. Um I'm wondering to myself, what is the fate of those people who reside in those ungoverned spots? Uh, and again, um what is the level of collaboration that you've gotten from the government, especially because you are in the field, you see what's happened uh, so you are able to give them on the spot assessments how forthcoming has government been in dealing with these situations especially the issues of um 
not properly demarcating these borders and, you know, easy access. Of course, we're also going to see these terrorists run back and forth uh, through those borders. Yeah, okay, thank you. I, I would go for the first question you ask. Um, there are actually thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people out there uh, in villages, in remote villages where uh, safety is not guaranteed, security is not guaranteed. These people, uh, we always have them in mind because we don't know how they are able to get food. We don't know how they are able to get medication. We don't know how they are able to continue with their livelihood in these areas. So we still have them in our minds and we are actually very committed to see that once we are able to get some uh, guarantee, security guarantee to get to these places, this is something we are really happy to do, to be able to support these hundreds of thousands of people that are not uh, accessible in these areas. This is our, 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 uh, like our hope that we will be able to have this. Um, uh, a lot of, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, a lot of uh, structures have been uh, destroyed out there. Uh, the basic things like medication, malaria could kill people, medication of uh, simple diseases, diarrhea and vomiting, the primary health centers, because people have, have to run away for their lives and no more functioning. So uh, imagine a place where you have uh, like a, a thousand people without a primary health center. This is something that really, really, really very bad. And we still have this at the back of our minds and thinking on how to get access to these people to be able to support them. This is uh, the, the first part. The second part, uh, for the government, we actually have a very good collaboration with the government. What we do is to try to work closely with government authorities, uh, state ministries of, of health, uh, state ministries of agriculture to support uh, people that are going back to farming activities. This is what we do. People that are um, like uh, supporting primary health centers, we also work closely with the primary health centers uh, and the state okay. ministries of health. This is a very okay. good collaboration that we have with the government. Okay. Also, we work closely with the armed forces, uh, trying to, to train them also on, uh, and also to remind them on international humanitarian law so that uh, in the course of their engagement, they should be able to know that there are rules to respect in the course of our operations. So All this right. is like uh, some of the collaborations. Like I, as I, my duguri for example. We, we, we have to go, unfortunately, Mr. Dawa, we're, we're out of time. We're out of time, unfortunately, but I want to thank you because you have been able to do justice to all of these um, questions that we've put across to you. We want to appreciate the ICRC for uh, the job that you're doing for the people in these troubled zones. Um, Aliyu Dawob is a spokesperson of the ICRC, that's the International um, Co Commission for thank Red Thank you for Cross. inviting me. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of the program tonight. I am Mary Anacle. Have a good evening.